peace to the gods and goddess of Pontic High. Peace and any positive energy always creates elevation. Um, sending peace to the high vibration human beings within the university. Um, all the Caucasians, Asians, Mexicans, Dravidians, and Arabs who are not racist. Um, these are the high vibration human beings. Those who also want peace and unity on this planet. Um, and I'm sending peace to the ancestors um, for working through me. I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you for coming in. And I love you deeply. Um, although I'm not out there in the physical to see what's going on, I am with, I am with you in the spirit. Because we are spirit and soul. We are not the flesh. We are the spirit and soul within the flesh. Let me repeat that one more time. We are not the flesh. We are the spirit and soul within the flesh. So, with that being said, with that being said, um, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna dive into some things and, and bring a little awareness of things uh, that are taking place. Um, as everyone knows, um, I've been incarcerated almost two years now. Uh, for a crime that I did not commit. I repeat, I have been incarcerated for two years now for a crime that I did not commit. Um, and because of this, this wrongful conviction, I have um, been in uh, solitary confinement for, for almost 24 months straight um, on, 20, on pretty much 24 hour lockdown. Um, the county jail I was in, in Barrow County, I was, uh, I would get out for 30 minutes a day. So that's still basically 25 hour lockdown. And now that I've been transferred to a prison, I'm on 25 hour lockdown. Um, um, I'm under 25 hour surveillance. Me and there's a camera in my room. Um, and, and that is what is going on with my situation right now. Um, so, and this is all public information. Um, and this is in disrespect to the people in the prison. Um, I'm located in Jackson, Jackson Prison, Diagnostics in Georgia. Uh, this is no disrespect to them because no one at Jackson Prison has mistreated me. I understand that having to be in solitary confinement comes from um, powers bigger than the individuals that work here at this facility. Uh, although I did experience a lot of harsh and unfair treatment when I was in Barrow County. Jail. Um, I would like to note that every officer in Barrow County Jail was not disrespectful or racist toward me. That would be a lie for me to say that. Um, however, I did do a, endure harsh racism, racism while um, being in that county jail. Um, however, we were told, we were told, y'all, that we have freedom of speech. Um, and I'll dive more into that a little later. But I want to note that a lot of things that have taken place for me is a direct violation of this First Amendment right known as freedom of speech. Um, I've always told you all in many lectures that we do not have any constitutional rights because we, your black slash Latino individuals, that we have been, we have been reclassified as black slash Latino uh, or black slash Latin Americans, African Americans and Latin Americans. That's what we are classified as. Um, the aboriginal beings who are living over here in what they call uh, North America. The prophet Noble Drew Ali, if you go check out his book, The Exoming of a Nation, um, he labeled this place, in his, and when he was here in the physical, uh, the wilderness of North America. Um, and and um, right now, Myself, Rashad Jamal, I am being used as a tool by the ancestors, the Most High, to to shed light through action of everything that I've ever spoke to you on is true. I have never harmed the officer. I've never been arrested for resisting uh, an officer. Um, I've never even assembled the black community and, and did any marchings or million man marches like uh like Farrakhan or other uh activists, black activists who have uh, did those type of grassroots uh, campaigns. I'm very careful about the verbiage I'm using right now because I wanna let my intellectual 
abilities shine through in this interview. Um, I talk out of passion a lot, and I speak from the core of the soul. This is why the teachings that I have brought forth to you resonate with many of you. Um, we're never in an ad on this platform, um, and I never will, because the ancestors, Almighty God, um, speaks through me. Um, I was sent back to this planet in this incarnation as Rashad Jamal. In my last incarnation, I came to this planet as Tucson El Overture. Um, and I'm just pronouncing it like that for those who are over here in America. Um, that pronunciation is, is more of a French pronunciation and when pronounced correctly for those who are uh, in Haiti or, you know, Dominican Republic, um, um, which is presently known as Hispaniola, right? Um, but in my last incarnation, um, I was on this planet as Tucson El Overture and I myself along with Duddy Bookman. Um, he's also back. Uh, he's also reincarnated in this lifetime under a different name, a name that I will not reveal to the public. Um, but myself, uh, him and myself, we, we, we were going through a lot of, a huge spiritual war on Haiti and Haiti. And um, it was similar to what's taking place right now. Um, over here in, 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 in America and, and just on the planet in general with the oppression of the Aboriginal beings, all your so-called black and Latino people who have been oppressed um, since um, Zeus and his children have landed here on this planet. Um, in that incarnation, um, I helped lead um, Haiti to gain independence. But it's important that I note to you that I was set up um, by somebody I consider family in my past life, a brother almost, um, and was invited to a meeting by the French colonial, the colonists. Um, the meeting I thought was to, bring, was to bring truth between us, Haiti, or the Aboriginal beings, and, and uh, the Spanish conquistadors, or the, or, the, or, the, or the white people who had conquered, who was trying to conquer us. Uh, they set me up at that meeting, and um, eventually arrested me and I ended up dying in jail right before the end of the Haitian Revolution. Uh, I would like to state, well death isn't real, but I transcended, I left my avatar. Uh, but I would like to state that the Haitian Revolution was started August 22nd in the 1700s, 1787. Uh, 1786, 1787. But August 22nd was the date that the Haitian Revolution was started in my last incarnation. I would like to note that in this reality, in this lifetime, August 22nd, 2023, was the day that I was officially sent to prison. Um, I just want to put that on your brain for a second, so that you can know that I am who I say I am. I am a divine being. I am one of the original 23 scientists of the cosmos. When I say I, I'm not referring to the flesh, but if it's just a vessel, I am referring to my spirit, my soul, my mind, my the core of my higher self. The body is your lower self. The spirit, soul, and source is your higher self. I am referring to my higher self. self. I am referring to what I am at the core, the real me. Um, and because Zeus, a.k.a. Satan, has been cast down to this material plane, he has forced a strong army to protect his kingdom, and they have been here for a very long time. Um, and they work through vessels, just like the ancestors and the gods and the angels. We work through vessels. Um, so because I have came back in this lifetime, and I am teaching you, I came to enlighten and inform you and raise the frequency of the planet, as well as how weird this planet of the parasitical invaders. Um, I have also been divinely created to help raise the vibration of the collective consciousness. A, meaning the fallen do not like that. Um, this is what has truly led to my wrongful incarceration. Um, and my fault, I have been falsely detained. I have been wrongfully convicted. And what's happening is you're seeing this happen in real life time so that you all can understand that everything I ever spoke to you was the truth. I told you that we had no rights 
in this democracy. We are not viewed as citizens of the United States of, of America. We are not uh, not not black slash Latino people, not the aboriginals. We are not viewed as that. We are viewed as descendants of slaves. We are viewed as free cattle. This is why the amendments do not apply to us. If what I said wasn't true, then the amendment of freedom of speech, which is the First Amendment, would apply to Rashad Jamal. Um, to further prove this to you, we did something such as putting out a petition. Um, a lot of people was questioning why are we putting out a petition? The petition is not going to change anything. Well, yes, it is. It's going to bring attention to the fact that you can petition, you can vote. Now, none of that means shit when you are not a part of those original bloodlines. If you speak out against Zeus, a.k.a. Satan, and his system, you will be attacked. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. They don't care about their own goddamn people. Um, so let's, let's examine this freedom of speech, which is the first thing in the right. Um, we placed a petition out last week, uh, and uh, my team placed it up, and, and I'm hoping that eventually they put the petition back up. Maybe they will after this video comes out, but as, as of now, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you may or may not know, the petition has been removed. It's under review. Um, the petition received over 10,000 signatures in the first three days. For those of you who do not, who do not understand how a petition works, a, peti a petition works like this. Once you reach 10,000 signatures on a petition, it makes the homepage on change.org. Once you reach 25,000 signatures, they have to notify government officials. At 100,000 signatures, they have to actually submit this to government officials. And based upon their First Amendment right of the Constitution, uh, a petition is, is the voice of the people, so it is strong enough to, 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 to address a reform in the government. Uh, legally, a wrong conviction would count, would, would, would count as will fall under the government because it's a part of the judicial system. Uh, and and they strategically stopped the petition because they received over 10,000 views, in, I mean, 10,000 signatures in, in less than three days. So you can say, it's safe to say that in a month, that petition was definitely going to go over 100,000 signatures. Um forcing them to have to send this to the governor and get this grievance um, readdressed. You have a First Amendment right that clearly says you have the right to petition because the voice of the people matters and that you have the right for peaceful assembly. All right? We're going to highlight a lot of that through this interview, peaceful assembly. Um, I guess this is another reason why they dislike me because I'm so well read. I actually read their laws. I know all about their version of history. I'm not just speaking to you from um, my opinions. Um, but like I said in my Black and Blue Laces song, you know, the white folks, at least the racist ones, they hate a nigga with some intellect. They want you dead and in jail and strung out on purpose sets. When they know that you fly, they hate on your turbulence. You get what I'm saying? Um, so they might not understand that I understand all the amendments. I know them by verbatim. I study them. Um, this petition truly shows that my First Amendment right has been violated uh, because I don't have any First Amendment rights because I am I am a black individual in America. America was conquered. It was ran by my ancestors. We found the land. We created the planet. It was it was created by us, the gods, the Atlanteans, um, the Cherokee, the Choctaw, all our original names. And then we were enslaved in our land and we classified as African Americans and Latin Americans. And they tell us we have these rights, but these are that's just there to pacify you because they do not want to create what's known as anarchy, which is rise within the people because it is more people than there is government. So they make you think you have uh, rights, but when situations like this occur, they, they, they clearly show that you do not. Change.org, we reached out to them. We, we, we posted it on their website. We trusted them to be fair and not racist and unbiased, and they removed the petition. They sent, they sent an email out to um, my, 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 my team who put it up and they said they had three that the, that the petition was receiving complaints and for and, and for them to lead a petition up that we need to prove three things 
one was wrongful conviction, two was that I was falsely detained, and three that this was the biggest form of racism in the U in the U.S. history. So these things were stated in the petition. However, I would like to state that you do not need to prove anything that you're saying to file a petition. Because in the petition, you are filing your grievances. You are addressing your issues. You are addressing what's wrong. Furthermore, um, if you go do, do your own research on Google, Google Rashad Jamal Petitions, there are other individuals who have placed petitions on change.org um, on my behalf. But their petitions may have maybe a few hundred signatures. The biggest one I've seen was like maybe 2,600 or something like that signatures. The difference with this petition is my, my team... My legal team actually placed this petition up, and we actually shared it to my platform. So, of course, it was going to get more attention, which it did. Now, all of you, uh, we appreciate all of you. I mean, you guys came through, you signed the petition, you were sharing the petition. Uh, so how can you say that we have to prove these three things, that we these grievances that we are addressing in the petition? Um, you didn't do that to the other people who put up petitions. Uh, you have one minute left. Who, who put up petitions for me. We, I know you did not do that. We know that, that they did not do that. Um, but because it was receiving so many signatures so fast, and we actually posted on on, on my platform, um, and they know we have a huge audience, this is the true reason they took the petition down. Um, and and the, they, they said they wanted us to prove these three things that we listed in the petition. They, that we need a proof of that and that the petitions had received complaints. Let that sit on y'all's soul for a second. That the petition received complaints. Look at your second to think about it. Thank you for using security. So they said that the petition was receiving complaints. But I want you to ask yourself some cosmic family. Why would a petition receive complaints? It's just a petition. It, we, we weren't harming anybody. We weren't threatening anybody. We were simply bringing public awareness to the wrongful conviction of myself, Rashad Jamal. And change.org takes the petition down <laughs> and tells us that we need proof of the things that we address in the petition. But based upon the First Amendment rights of the United States Constitution, if I am a citizen of this republic and if I have constitutional rights, as they say, <laughs> then why would my petition be taken down? So basically, when you saying it's proof of that I was falsely detained, you think Change.org don't know that I'm incarcerated? Yes, the media put out all type of frivolous, frivolous stories about me the last two weeks. I'm hearing this from um, my sources out there in the world, my PR team. And you, in one of those articles, um, I'm hearing that Fox News literally mentioned that a petition was on Change.org. So, when Change.org tells us that we need to prove that I was falsely detained, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Because we, can, we, we know that you know that I'm incarcerated. I mean, we have pictures that I'm, uh, that I'm incarcerated, right? Um, jail records state that I'm incarcerated. So, I said I was falsely detained. So what they won't prove is that it was false. Because guess what they probably can say? Oh, well, you were detained. That don't mean it was falsely detained. And you say you were convicted, but we need proof of a wrongful conviction. Just because you were convicted doesn't mean that it was you were convicted wrongfully. Right? Like, it's all type of mind games that they can play using that verbiage of give us proof of the accusations that you listed in the petition. And... The last time I checked, change.org is not the appellate court. That's what we have to do in the appellate court. We have to file motions and prove that it was a wrongful conviction. Right? So now you're telling me to file a petition 
you have to go through the same process that you go through when you're filing for an appeal. No, you don't have to do that. It's just a petition. You state your grievances and and and, and you and you and you and you share it and you try to get signatures and build support to get the petition taken to the very next step. But they took Rashad Jamal's petition down because it is a it is an attack on me for who I am. You gotta understand who who these who I'm up against. When I for every single soul I help unplug from this matrix, they have attacked me. It's just like every time when Neo went into the matrix in the movie The Matrix, he was attacked by the agents, right? Or the sent or the sent or the sentinels would come and attack the spaceship every time they they they, they plugged into the matrix. Because they knew that they were going into the matrix to help free minds out of the matrix. I landed here in their year of 1986, and I was sent down here to help free minds and spirits and souls from this matrix. To help lead all these lost souls back to their higher self. To help you connect back with your highest state, which is the divinity within you, which is the God presence within you. And because these beings who hide behind different brand names, but they are actually fallen angels, working and hiding in vessels, they don't like that. So when you talk about the petition, you know, I would like to see, um, did they do this for Brittany Griner? You can go on change.org right now and look up Brittany Griner first petitions and look up Brittany Griner petitions. And I remember saying this when I was out there, right? Um, and I had my PR team look it up and they told me the same thing. Um, when you look at Brittany Griner's petition, it received over 400,000 signatures. And, then her, and her whole petition was about she was wrongfully detained. And I'm not, I don't have nothing against, you know, Brittany Griner or, or any of that, right? But let's not forget Cosmic Family that she was actually caught with cannabis oil in her possession. So technically, she was not wrongfully detained. Now, the exact verbiage for that would have would have been to say that she maybe have been over sentenced because the news articles were stating that they that Russia sentenced her to nine years just for some cannabis oil, and I agree that's an over sentence. I agree that's not that's, that that doesn't fit the crime, right? But when you use words like wrongfully detained, that means you ain't do nothing. So if she uh, if she would never got caught with no cannabis oil at all, then she could have used words like I've been wrongfully detained. Right, but nevertheless, that didn't stop her petition from getting four hundred thousand signatures. It didn't stop it from being mainstream news in the media that she was wrongfully detained. And I know, goddamn well, it changed that org did not reach out to Brittany Griner's team and say, "Hey, look, before we let this petition go through, we're going to need proof that she was wrongfully detained." No, you did not do that. You're only doing it because I'm Rashad Jamal. So. This would be showing that the teachings that I taught you guys about us being Aboriginal beings and that they enslaved us in our own land and we don't have any rights and the Constitution is not for us. The Constitution is only for Caucasians, white Americans. That's who the Constitution applies to. They are looked at as citizens. We are looked at as descendants of slaves. Okay? We are looked at as descendants of slaves. The only people that are looked at as citizens of this country are those people that are Caucasian or Arabs that move into the country, or Asians that move into the country. Like I taught you, a person from overseas could come over here in the two weeks, have a store. You see the Arabs do it all the time. You know, they, they come over here, the Arabs come over here for two weeks, he got a whole store and a house. You've been over here your whole life fighting for rights, then we still ain't got it. Yo, I, we fighting for them, our mama fought for them, your mama mama fought, your grandma was fighting for them, we still ain't got to all type of rights we've been fighting for. Excuse me. But yet, you see, the air, the air, the air, the Arab come over here, and he got store in motion in two weeks. So that goes to show you who these laws apply to. And you have a situation right now where we supposed to have a First Amendment right, yet my First Amendment right for the, the petition and for peaceful assembly has been violated because the petition was removed for no reason. Because the reason stated that it's invalid. We have other petitions that people have made on their own. You all can free, free to research them, where they state basically the same thing, that I've been wrongfully convicted and stuff like that, and their petition was not removed. 
They only removed our petition because they knew that it was going to go well over 100,000 signatures. Period. All right. Um, I also want to address this coin sale probe thing. If you've been in a car, this coin sale probe thing. Uh, a lot of you are not aware. Um, oh, before I get into it, hopefully they put the petition back up though. But as of now, the petition is not back up. They said it's still in the review, um, and I feel like they might end up deleting it. Um, if they end up putting it back up, then hey, that would be the right thing to do. And hopefully, since we are bringing attention to it in this video, this interview, that they do put it back up. Uh, but with that being said, I want to talk about Cointel Pro, right? Um, a lot of people don't know that Cointel Pro is real. They don't even know what Cointel Pro is. But, but Cointel Pro was created uh, by the FBI, uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Um, who was the founder of the FBI. Now, 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 how did J. Edgar Hoover become the founder of the FBI? Well, J. Edgar Hoover originally was a private investigator. And um, he, they, he was sent to spy on Marcus Garvey. Uh, Marcus Garvey was a powerful black guy that, that spoke with authority and spoke with intelligence and passion. And in his, in his era, he was trying to get people back to Africa. He had the Pan-Africanism movement. Uh, but he still was speaking out against the oppression. He started a, a huge tape over here in this country known as the Negro Star. Long story short, they did not like that. Um, they don't like any time you speak out against them or people start to listen to you. So they assigned J. Edgar Hoover to Marcus Garvey. And long story short, J. Edgar Hoover uh, was a private eye who came up with the first uh, informant, the, the informant, um, the informant um, program, which is where he actually hired five black people to infiltrate Marcus Garvey's uh, movement. And Marcus Garvey was being shot and deported back to the West Indies. The president was so happy that J. Edgar Hoover did a great job that he gave him his own, his own uh, uh, private investigation agency known as the FBI. The FBI was started to ensure that another black messiah never arises out of the black community. This is the true purpose of the FBI. Uh, most of their surveillance and stuff like that is done on us, blacks and Latinos, and it's been like that since the 50s and the 60s. Uh, they also came up with a, with a, with a program called Cointel Pro. Uh, the FBI knows who every single one of us is, and they are watching every single one of us. Uh, now, is every single person working in the FBI bad? No, they are not. But I have made statements saying fuck the FBI in the past, and I meant about, and I'm saying that because I say fuck what the FBI stands for, because I understand that a, that a big part of it is to to is to spy on us and to hurt us, not to help us. Uh, but you do have some good people, some good agents that work for the FBI that want to do the right thing. But guess what? When those agents try to do the right thing, like when you have the Pizzagate scandal going on, a lot of those agents end up getting fired, or they ended up dying mysteriously. Um, so when you do have people in law enforcement that try to do the right thing, they, they either get fired or they end up dying mysteriously and stuff like that. So uh, that's why we always say fuck 12 because we understand that they don't give a fuck about us. But once again, you have freedom of speech. So I have to, I can say fuck 12, fuck them, fuck the FBI, fuck whoever. If I'm not doing anything physically, then you have no reason to bother me. I said, but once again, I thought that we have a First Amendment right to freedom of speech. But I see that we don't. Okay? So, COINTELPRO is just all about the spread of misinformation, the disinformation, uh, assassinations, false imprisonment of, of, of public figures, of people uh, who, who try to bring people of color together and to stand up against the system politically. Anyone who done that has been attacked. Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, are some of the more famous names. Martin Luther King, uh, Angela Davis, Huey P. Newton, Bobby Seale, Fred Hampton. They were assassinated through Cointel Pro programming. Mumbia Ali, uh, Dr. Sebi was killed through Cointel Pro. Nipsey Hussle was killed through Cointel Pro. A lot of people don't know these things. These are all facts. Um, um, and they spread misinformation. And, uh, a, a lot of that is what they do to, to tear down the image of the individual of the target. Uh, if they don't flat out assassinate you, they seek to kill your image. So that's what you see going on right now with Rashad Jamal in my situation. You see all these articles coming out. Uh, 
and it's all based off the initial wrongful conviction. All right. Um, in my case, I was never even investigated. They they sent the U.S. Marshals after me with no investigation. That would be a, a constitutional violation of my constitutional rights because you violated my due process. But once again, my situation is being used to prove to you that we do not have any rights, literally. Um, um, and, and off of that wrongful conviction, you now are, my family's getting threats. Um, people, are, I'm hearing that people are sending me threats because you are using the media to spread all type of misinformation about me. Um, I remember when I was out there, that, uh, some, 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 some individual took their, took his mind with a four and they, they, they put that on me. I'm not responsible for nobody doing anything that's an adult. I never told anyone to harm their mom or anything like that. So how could you even put that on me? But they put that on me. Uh, while I've been, while I was incarcerated in the county jail, I heard about uh, something that happened with a, with some people in Alabama that hurt somebody. They tried to put that on me. On me. Uh, how could you put that on me? I am not to blame for if a person commits any act of violence. You can't say, oh well, because they watch your university that you are responsible for their actions. If that's the case. Why aren't you locking up these Hollywood producers who make all these movies that grow up by violence? Why aren't you locking up all the record label executives who promote, who's been these about promoting music that glorifies violence? Why aren't you locking up these Hollywood adult film companies that spend millions of billions of dollars promoting sex and the degradation of women? You are not doing that. Neither are you blaming them, right? Um, but but with Rashad Smart, that's what's going on. And in the most recent situation, um, there's not allegations that there are six people missing in St. Louis. If it's six people missing in St. Louis, my heart goes out to them. I hope that them individuals are found. But you see, coin tail poet is fine. Now they are rolling out all type of articles. I'm talking about, I'm hearing the Post, the U.S. Sun, uh, Vice, uh, Fox, uh, USA Today. These are major, major media outlets that are tying my name to six people that I have never met in my life. Never met them. Um, I don't even know if they watch my lectures, right? But they are saying because they watch my lectures that I am responsible for them. I have now been labeled as a co-leader, which is a derogatory misnomer, right? Um, a coat is what David Koresh had, you know, the white guy, he had land, everybody was living together, doing crazy stuff. The true coat is the Dixie Mafia, who runs Barrow County, where I was wrongfully convicted at. They out there killing black people. They had a new age KKK. That's your real coat. Or what about the about the, the Masons and the Illuminati, the Bavarian Illuminati, and the black nobility, and all these secret societies? Those are coats. They own land, they own property, they do blood rituals and things in the secret. Nothing I did was in secret. I don't own any land. I don't live off grid. I live on the goddamn grid myself. Right? Now, do I do I feel like we should be living off the grid? Yeah, but how, do I live off the grid? No, I live on the grid. If I didn't live on the grid, you wouldn't be getting these YouTube lectures from me. But yet, you have people that, um, that they say went off grid with or something like that, and, and you're blaming me for it. You're saying that this is 10. You, you're using women and kids because you further want to play on the fact that you know we all love women and kids, so let's make them look even worse. We already got them with a child molestation conviction, so we want his people to hate him. We want people to not like him at all, and we're going to keep adding crimes that have been committed to a women and kids and attach his name to it. This is what you call Quintel Pro. How, how am I a co-leader? Because I'm telling people to meditate. I'm telling people to, to love the animals and love nature and love the plants like they love themselves because all of creation belongs to Almighty God. How is that going to make me a co-leader? How Basically, anybody who has ever listened to a lecture, whether it be in the University of Cosmic Intelligence right here on YouTube or whether it be on TikTok or whether you want on the website, they are labeling you all co-members. And some people so stupid, they're like, oh, they say he got a coat. If you ever listen to a goddamn lecture, they're calling you a coat member. They said the University of Cosmic Intelligence is a coat. How is the use? How is the UCI a coat? It's a YouTube channel. I decided to name my YouTube channel that. Now it's a coat because I'm teaching esoteric truth because people are listening. Now it's a coat. 
now it's something wrong with people sun gazing. But 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 you Google sun gazing, you Google meditation, you're gonna see white people doing it. When white people meditate and, and gaze at the sun, they consider yoga 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 masters. They're considered, considered peaceful people and people that are trying to shift the paradigm of the collective consciousness. But when I tell people to meditate, when I tell people to get into meditation, when I tell people to use crystal healings, when I tell people to communicate with the animals, to connect with the plants, to love everything like you love yourself, to love yourself, to eat, to see yourself as a reflection of Almighty God, that makes you a God. Now I'm a cult leader. Now the university, the UCI is a cult. Do you see the, the smear campaign? Do you see the coin tail poet work? Do you see the witchcraft? The spell casting, the trickery of the wording, because they are of their father. Their father was a murderer and a liar from jump, like the prophet Yahweh said. It's the same reason they killed Yahweh, aka Jesus. And I've always told you, people like them, like, oh, he contradicting himself. I'm not contradicting anything. Your goofy ass has never understood what I was talking about. I said from jump. That the, that the story of Jesus you have is, one minute left the story of Jesus is real but the image of the white guy with the long hair and he died for your sins and that's not real and that Jesus was not his name Jesus is just another name for Zeus so this is the way Satan aka Zeus has stolen the prophet Yahweh's story to get you to worship Satan so when you say thank you Jesus you're really worshiping Satan so Satan stole Yahweh, a.k.a. Jesus' story, to get you to worship him. That's what I was saying. And when the prophet Yahweh said, Ye are gods, all of you are children of the Most High, it's in Psalms 86, I believe. And when I said, I'm a cult leader, that goes to show you that they don't, they, that none of you never read the Bible. And that they hate truth. Thank you for using Securus. This only shows that 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 they despise. I don't like to use the word hatred because it's very low vibrational. But they despise truth. When we use words like ling the lingo, I call it the cosmic lingo, right? High vibration, low vibration. They have articles out right now. I'm here for my PR team. Well, they are saying that oh, hey, that's weird. High vibrational and low vibrational is weird. Is high vibrational not another word for positive? It is. Is low vibrational not another word for negative? It is. If you're high vibrational, that means you are a positive individual. If you are low vibrational, that means you are a negative individual. Period. They, they didn't like Jesus when he was here neither, y'all. And that's how they doing me right now. All Jesus did, because once again, Jesus wasn't his name. In the, in the image of him, it's not real, right? The ideology they give you of him, being the, the only son of God and the lone God, that's not real. But the story is, if you ever read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and you would understand what I'm talking about. But most individuals have never done that. I've read the Bible, I've studied the Bible in and out, I've studied the Quran, I can speak with you about any surah, I can speak with you about Old Testament, New Testament, I am a historian, and that's why they don't like Rashad Jamal, if I was just some crazy YouTuber, then why the hell are y'all messing with me? When David Icke, the white guy, who has been giving his opinion on the reptilian species for years, way before I ever went public, David Icke, look him up if you don't know who that is, D-A-V-I-D, space I-C-K-E, David Icke, he has been talking about this planet being ran by reptilian government for a very, very long time, he has never been called a co-leader, he's just been called a conspiracy theorist, I'd rather you call me a conspiracy theorist. But when I say it, I'm a cult leader. But you didn't like Jesus. That's why everybody said, oh, we can't wait till you come back. No, you don't. You're lying. You're lying. 
Because the prophet has came many times. Yahweh has came many times. We have came here many times. And every time we come here, you guys attack us for speaking the same truth. Truth never changes, no matter who the messenger may be. So you see the people, oh, oh, he got that information from Dr. York, or he got that from Bobby Hammond, or he got that from Jesus, or he got that from... I haven't gotten anything from anybody. The information I give to you comes through me to you from Almighty God. And the information, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Gandhi, Dr. York, Bobby Hemet, Phil Valentine, and on and on and on, this information has came from the same source. We are speaking to you from source. So, of course, a lot of what we are saying is going to sound the same. It should because it's true. What you should be questioning is why there are 15 different versions of the Bible with 15 different stories. That's what you should be questioning. But they did, like I say, they did Jesus, a.k.a. Yahweh, the same way, man. Killed the man for using, for speaking truth, because he spoke out against the church. Am I not speaking out against the church? Am I not speaking out against false religion? Organized religion which divides the people? Am I now, not, not right now wrongfully incarcerated for doing so? That brings us back to freedom of speech. So, I'm sitting in jail because I decided to exercise my First Amendment right that I do not have. And now, in front of the whole world, I am being used as a vessel, as a live example, by the ancestors to prove to you that we have no rights. As long as you be a good little nigger bitch, or a good little nigger boy, and, or a good white person that's kissing ass and being racist toward blacks, you will have no issues down here in Satan's kingdom. Or if you want to be a good entertainer, hey, you better, like she told LeBron James, you better shoot that shut up and dribble. So it's a lot of athletes you know, who are not speaking out about my situation that know what's going on. It's a lot of famous people that are not speaking out that know what's going on because they are scared to lose their endorsement deal. LeBron James, I'm hearing he gave out a tweet a few months ago saying Grand Rising. I've been watching LeBron James play basketball since 2003. He ain't never said Grand Rising. So if LeBron James is tweeting out a grand rising at me, he is watching these lessons. But guess what? If LeBron James go on Twitter right now and say free hashtag Rashad Jamal, I bet his ass don't play in the NBA no more. If any NFL player, any celebrity do it with a platform, your ass gonna lose it. That's why you see all your big, man, as many, as many big spiritual leaders and platforms that should be speaking about this right now. We in the same fight. We not supposed to be fighting against each other. We're fighting against the system. We're fighting against oppression. We're fighting against evil. We're fighting against Zeus. You niggas did a lot of shallow reasoning. You niggas did got content with likes and views and comments. Because if you wasn't, you would be speaking about what's going on with right now with your brother, Rashad Jamal, right now. Oh, well, let me not speak about it. You know, I don't want to speak about it because I don't want them to come after me. If you feel like that, then you're vibrating low, and that makes you a house Negro, or that makes you an evil white person. We ought to stand in righteousness, to stand in unity. You, you, the mother of my child, because she's not the mother of my child, until I get a blood test, because she's telling everybody she's not. But on the internet, now she's saying she is again. So she got upset, because I moved on with my life. And then she put a case on me. And the police, when they found out that I was this poet, philosopher, Messiah, prophet, guru, scientist. Oh, we don't like him. We don't like niggers like that. We've seen a million of you. You got to go. So they put the case on me. So a case was put on me for exercising my right to freedom of speech. Then the media is now attacking me for exercising my right to freedom of speech. Then we put up a petition that was taken down for exercising freedom of speech and the right for peaceful assembly and the right to petition to the government. So we are seeing over and over again how this First Amendment right that they claim we have has been taken down. It's been, that we do not have. I've never gathered people together for a million man march. I've never mobilized us on any of that. All I simply did was took to YouTube to express my opinions and my ideologies on cosmic history. 
And I've told you in every lecture, you have free will. I am a guru. I will never infringe on your free will. You are free to believe everything I'm saying, or you are free to think that I'm lying. I am not here to, to make you believe anything. I am simply here to, to give you esoteric truth. I am here to enlighten and inform you and help raise, and help raise the frequency of the planet. It's up to you to do the work. It's up to you to believe me or not. So I, you are watching in live time that I have been castigated. I am being castigated. They are trying to dilapidate my image and my message all because I am exercising freedom of speech, which is a First Amendment right that we do not have. And when I told you niggas we didn't have it, you niggas thought I was crazy. Now you're seeing it. I'm supposed to just be some crazy YouTuber. I'm sure making a whole lot of people mad. If it's not reptilians and Pleiadians running this planet, if this planet didn't ain't till we have two sons, if we rap not really gods, if we wasn't giants at first, if we don't come from Sirius X, if the, if the NBA doesn't have rims with magnets in it and balls with magnets in it and, and robots in the NBA, if we don't have synthetic, my five synthetic robots running around, clones running around, cyborgs and androids running around, vampires running around, then why the fuck are y'all so mad at me? Why am I not just being looked at as some crazy conspiracy theorist? Let that sink in, will you? I mean, U.S. Today, my, my PR told me U.S. Today just put out another article where they literally, they didn't even talk about the allegations in St. Louis. They made an article strictly attacking the teachings, talking about, oh, Rashad Jamal lied about the transatlantic slave trade and, 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 and no, black people enslaved themselves. And they are African-Americans. We're not African anything. Africa was named after Scipio Africanus, that is a Roman general. America was named after Amerigo Vespucci, that's a Spanish conquistador. Conquistador is Spanish for conqueror, for those of you who don't understand what the word means. Those are two white people. How the hell could I be an African American? My ancestors were not white, they were black, like me. You look at every American invention, it has a white face on it. But you want to name me a racist? Because they're, they're calling me a racist now, y'all. I'm this racist cult leader. Because I'm, I'm, because I'm exposing their racism and their, and their white supremacy, I'm a racist now? Would you look at that? Look at the twist, the fuckery of the words. You look at Mount Rushmore, these are supposed to be the forefathers of America. These are supposed to be the greatest man to ever do it. And they not, they ain't not. And nobody on Mount Rushmore is black. You look at the greatest inventions in American history, nobody black going to be by them. They will have a few inventions that they attribute to us. The rest going to be their face on it. And I'm the racist? I'm the racist, though. Let him who has eyes see clearly. We reached out to Ben Crump, tried to get Ben Crump to take the case so we can file a civil suit for the defamation of character that is taking place within the media. Just flat out lies. Ben Crump doesn't even want to take the case. Sounds like a house Negro to me. Why? Because he has relationships with Fox and these big media companies, so he's scared to go against them because he knows he'll lose his firm. Y'all so stuck in a material plane, though. You can't take none of this shit with you. You gotta check in with the spiritual plan when it's all said and done. Dean Vice put out an article where a goddess comes forward and clearly says that she knows the people involved in the situation in St. Louis. She said, I know them involved. I know that Rashad Jamal has nothing to do with this. She left with her boyfriend. That's what she said in the article in Vice. Why hasn't the media corrected that narrative then? Why, why isn't the media, NBC, and all of them that put these articles out, why aren't they going to say, hey, you know what, we spoke to somebody who actually knows the, one of the ladies who, 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 was, who was alleged to be missing, and they said that she does have, this doesn't have anything to do with Rashad Jamal. That she left with her boyfriend, and they allegedly went to Mexico. 
That's the, that's the article said in Vice. So why ain't they circulating that? No, they gonna keep the they gonna keep circulating this lie that I'm connected to these people that I've never met in my life. This channel has over two hundred thousand subscribers. That that's what my PR them told. Millions of views. I don't know everybody in the live. I don't know everybody who subscribed. Most ninety nine point nine percent of the people I don't know. I've never met most many of you. At least physically, I've never met you. I don't. How am I responsible for you? You know how many movies I didn't watch? So you said because I don't watch Lorenz Tate movies, he know I never met Lorenz Tate. Cause I like the cause I watch Kobe Bryant shoot the basketball. I'm responsible, Kobe Bryant responsible for me if I do something. How? We've never seen this in history. And why is the media correcting the narrative? Cause they are out to destroy me. All of you know that, but the question is, what are you going to do about it out there? You you guys should be coming together spiritually in some for, sort, for, sort of way to hold on to bring real attention to this. But you, I'm, I'm hearing this more black people talking shit about me than anything. That's my PR team and my wife and I'm telling me, it ain't even white people in the comments talking shit about me, it's my own people. That's how it always be, because we vibrate so low. And niggas house niggas. So niggas want to go please them. They don't give a fuck about you neither, though. Like if you jump in the comments and talk shit about Rashad tomorrow, that's going to help you get a raise at your job. They still don't like you. You walk outside there, pull your dumb ass over, put a case on you next. All of this, y'all, for freedom of speech. Didn't know lawyers want to take my physical case, and don't know lawyers want to take the civil case for me to put a lawsuit in to sue these media companies who are defaming me like this. A lot of y'all said when in my legal in my legal case, oh he should have went pro se, oh he should have did a writ of mandamus. You could do a writ of kiss my ass because obviously you vibrating that low that you don't understand that this they shit they took the land from us. Your vote doesn't count, so what makes you think? Your, your word is going to count. You can do a writ of madness. You can do any of that stuff. That, ain't gonna, that shit don't work in court. If they got their mind made, they want to lock your ass up, your ass is getting locked up. They not trying to hear no shit about I'm a moor, I'm a sovereign being. They know you that, but they ain't trying to hear that shit. A lot of y'all talking to y'all never been in a real court situation. Then, in my, then when I was in my county jail, I wouldn't even get out the cell. They could go to no law library. What the hell have a law library? What you talking about? How am I found anything? You know what I'm saying? They just typing to me, typing some shit out there, man. Come on, man. But in the end, we win. It's a spiritual warfare. Listen, this is just proof that I am who I say I am. There's no reason my family should be getting death threats. I'm getting them. Why? Because the media is spreading all this false narratives about me. So that way, if something happened to me, they could put it to say somebody else did it because they was mad because they believed I was a child molester who was out here uh, leading women, kids, and preying on women and kids. They even said that I'm I'm preying on women and kids. How? The university is open to anybody. It's just a YouTube channel. Anybody, I can't dictate who comes and subscribe. I'm married with my own kids, so how am I here targeting? He's targeting single women with kids. What? I've been dating single women with kids since I was 18, so I guess I was targeting them being too. So it's my fault that she went and fucked some nigga, and he don't want to be with her no more, and now she's a single mom, so that's my fault too. Because to be honest, I'm a whole other belt out here. So even if I wasn't married nine times out of ten, I'm in my 30s. Even though time and age isn't real, I'm in my 30s. Let them tell it. Although I'm ageless because I'm an ancient soul. Any goddess, what I'm trying to say is any goddess I date, because I'm not a child molester, so any goddess I date, nine times out of ten, she's going to be at least 25 or older, which by that age, most of us have kids, at least one. Now, is it goddesses that's in their 30s without kids? Yeah. But to be honest, a lot of them goddesses can't have kids. So on average, the average goddess that any adult is gonna we gonna come across. She's gonna be. She's gonna have some kids, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? 
The only way I'm going to date a guy, find a goddess that ain't got no kids is if her ass got them a goddamn child. Then she's 14, 15 or some shit. And even then, I come out the streets at 15. Motherfuckers be having kids. My mama was 17 when she had her first child. So this whole media, oh, he's targeting single women with kids for the university. Man, I have been dating single women with kids. Now that's my fault too, huh? So I'm the one that told the last nigga she was with. So if I see a chick walking down the street right now, first off, she's going to have to be single for me to come to her anyway. If I was not married and she's single and I approach her, it's my fault she's single. And if it just so happened that she had some kids before me, that's my fault too, huh? So now I'm targeting her. No, if she's attractive and I like her vibration, I'm going to go communicate with her. And if it just so happened that she's single, I'm going to try to... Get to know her better. And if it just so happened that she has kids, I'm gonna not, not I'm not gonna not talk to her if she has kids. It's my fault that the last nigga that whoever she had kids with, they ain't work out. So that's Rashad Jamal. So it's Rashad Jamal fault if, if the guy that have kids and she's single. Cause her and the nigga she had kids with ain't work out. It's Rashad Jamal fault if somebody watches my YouTube channel and they decide to just say, you know what, fuck it, I wanna. You have one minute left. I, I wanna go meditating today and I don't wanna be bothered with the world. I have everything my fault. This is the biggest form of Cointel Pro. And then we try to put up a, a petition in you and y'all take it down, telling me to give y'all proof, give my, my, for my team to give proof of a wrongful conviction. Now y'all the appellate courts? Wow. You know, the last thing I, I know, I know we've been speaking about the petition and Pope's and uh, Cointel Pro and freedom of speech, but the, 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 the biggest thing I meant to mention earlier in the video about them taking the petition down, um, violate first, violate my first amendment right. Because, um, of course, I know many of you might say, hey, well, you could just start a petition on your own website or another site, but it's really, it's pointless to start the petition because they're going to just keep finding reasons to take it down. But the biggest thing is that, um, a lot of those people, from what I'm hearing from my team, was that people was actually donating to that petition. I don't know if people thought that the money was coming to me, but it wasn't. Um, any money that you donated, if you are a person that signed that petition and did donate, that money was going, that money went to change.org. Um, that money doesn't come to Rashad Jamal. If you want to donate to me, you have to donate to our university cash app uh, or through PayPal, um, you know, more about like you know purchasing crystals or you know subscribing to the website uh streaming the music things like that we normally post that in every description or every video uh any money that you donated to the petition for those of you who did donate that money was to change the org to support them um that doesn't go to us so a big thing that my pr made them said today when they, they emailed change.org back and they said hey well if you're going to take this petition down, will you be refunding all the people who um, donated, you know, to your to change.org on behalf of Rashad Jamal? Because if you're going to take that petition down and you don't refund everybody back their money who did donate, now that's a scam and that's, and that's robbery. And that's the biggest thing. It's like you going to have let all the people that support me come on your website, sign the petition, People donate money to the petition, and then you take the you take the petition down, but keep the money instead of giving everybody their money back who donated. So that's that's very sad. But that being said, I love y'all all deeply. Please share this via Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. If you have a YouTube platform, that's the whole reason why you should make a video about this video. Like this is crazy. This is this is madness because we are in spiritual warfare. But um, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, satanic energy going on around the situation right now. But with that being said, I love you all deeply. I'll leave you back home. Perfect peace. One.